So I've been using Meet Journey for a while and I have developed a prompting system that works for me that I want to share with you. It has helped me create results like this and like this and like this. And I think if used well, it can help you create great, amazing results. It's a bit verbose, but I like that it allows me to have clarity in thinking about how I'm creating my ad and in how I'm structuring the prompts. Let's go. So we fire up mid journey and the first thing that you do is type slash imagine, which is your standard way of starting a mid journey prompt. So mid journey prompts are basically a series of instructions that you give to mid journey to generate the art that you want. You tell it one thing and then you add something else to refine the thing that you have just described. So you describe an idea and then you tell it, modify this idea in this way. Now, I was doing some research and I discovered that there are certain things that Mid Journey will ignore. So the things that make sense to us, like commas, semicolons, brackets, etc, Mid Journey doesn't really care about them. What it cares about is the words in there. So I figured, why not structure my instructions in a way that makes sense to me, knowing that Mid Journey is going to ignore those things. So my prompting style includes the use of brackets, to create segments of prompts that define certain things and certain features that I want that prompt to have. The first set of brackets will have the idea which is describing what you have in your mind and then the second bracket can have your art style which has the keywords for the kind of styles that you want to use. Now the first bracket will not have the one idea because Mijani might interpret that. I don't want to risk that. So I generally just leave the first bracket to be just for the description of the thing that I want to create. So the rudimentary idea behind this prompting system is that you have sections of your prompt that have specific functionality that help you create the full piece of art. So my prompt has the idea the art style, the materials, the lighting, the location, the composition, the camera, the realism, the rendering style, the mood, and then the parameters. The parameters do not have brackets because they need to stand on their own. Otherwise, you'll get an error with mid journey. So this is what a skeleton would look like. You have the idea, you have the art style, you have the materials, you have the lighting, you have the location, you have the composition, you have the camera, you have the realism, you have the rendering style, you have the mood, and then you have your parameters. The word parameters will be removed, but the parameters are those things where you see like 8K, dash dash AR, dash dash S, etc. Those are the parameters. Those parameters are special codes that mid journey uses to do certain things. So for example, dash dash AR means that you are going to tell mid journey a specific aspect ratio. That's what the AR stands for. When you do dash dash S, it means that you want to create a specific stylization and mid journey will respect that. When you do dash dash V, then you are selecting a specific version of mid journey to use. So that's what the template for the prompt looks like. You have your idea, you have the art style, the materials you want to use, how you want the lighting to look, the location or set, the composition or framing, the camera type and settings, the realism that you want, the way in which it's rendered, uh, which is basically how it's presented, and then the mood, which is something that I added just for just, it seems to work sometimes and sometimes it seems off. And then you have the parameters, like maybe you want it in 4K, resolution or to have all these other parameters. So let's take a look at it in action. So our first idea, which is something that has been going viral in the last few days, is the Pope wearing a far coat. He wasn't wearing a far coat, but I'm just using far coat as an example. So the idea is a picture of the Pope wearing a far coat. So we do the mid journal slash imagine, then start the prompt. The Pope wearing a far coat. So in the first prompt, I put, I left the word idea there. In the second, I didn't. Ideally, I don't want it there, but let's see what it does. So after waiting for a while, you see that even with the word idea there, it has still generated an approximation of the image that I'm looking for, which is a picture of the Pope wearing a far coat. So I don't know if those are actual real Popes. Uh, 
but that's what it's given us. As you can see, it's a raw image. The setting is historic. We have not determined any kind of variables. We've just told it give us a picture of the pop wearing a fur coat. Okay, let's refine it some more. So we are going to try three styles. We're going to check, we're going to give it an art style. The first art style is going to be photography. The second art style is going to be oil on canvas. The third art style is going to be watercolor painting. Let's see what it does. And as you can see, the first one looks fantastic. It's a photo. It's looking a lot more focused than the previous one that had everyone in the background. This one is now just a picture of the Pope. This is an oil painting. As you can see, it does look like an oil painting. Again, I can only recognize one of these popes, but it is a picture of the pope. One of them has a lot of, uh, has a really thick fur coat. The other looks to be a little bit more normal. And then the last one is a watercolor painting and it looks fantastic. So just by creating those three art styles, you're immediately able to tell me journey what direction that you want this image to go. Now, one thing I really want to point out is that my mid journey is set to version five by default. You can set yours when you go to slash settings, you will see the different parameters. Um, so mine is set to version five. You can choose version four, version three. It's set to the base quality. I can go higher, but I don't really want to spend my credits. And then my style is set to medium. You can go very high, high or low. Again, I don't mess around with that. Then you can do public mode or stealth mode. Um, stealth mode, you have to pay a lot more for it. And then the rest are just sort of like other parameters. So I just wanted to share this because every single time I put, I put in a prompt, it will immediately apply two parameters, the uplight upscaling parameter, and it will automatically select version five. So these are already set in my settings. So when you see them, just know that those are parameters that are being automatically set. So we have our three art styles. Let's play around with them a little more. So let's add another set of parameters. And in this case, we'll call it materials. So material in this case is skin, fur, oil, canvas. So this sort of gives better direction for what the picture has. It has human skin. It has fur from the coat that is wearing. It has oil and canvas materials. Now this is a bit hit or miss, but I'd like to include it there because I believe it gives you extra control. So this image is starting to look a little bit more focused. The oil painting looks a little bit better than the previous one, but let's keep going. So I wanted to add additional information to the art style. And so I decided to make it an oriental painting. Let's see how that works. And then I decided to also try another style, which is the Leonardo da Vinci style, Mona Lisa style. And then for the watercolor painting as well, I added more information, which was to give it a Japanese oriental watercolor painting. So this is what it gave me for oriental painting oil on compass. As you can see, it's beginning to look more refined. I don't know if it's oriental oil on canvas. Uh, maybe I should have done my references better, but it's looking significantly much, much neater and much clearer than the previous one. So this is the original. You can see that it looks a little bit hazy. The colors are not as sharp. And then when you look at the oriental one, it looks significantly cleaner. The structure of the oil painting looks much, much better. And also the vibrancy of the image is significantly improved. There's a lot more contrast in this image. All right, let us look at the Leonardo da Vinci style. Um, I didn't particularly like it because it felt like it was, there was too much far. And again, that was a problem from my prompts. It's really heavy on the far, but the quality of the painting looks pretty decent, although I'm not a fan. And of course, one of those images looks really messed up. This is one in which I removed the far from the materials. Um, I still think the fact that the coat has the word far in it, it's creating a lot of heavy textures with far. And this image is beginning to look absolutely weird, like the face of a dog on the pop. So I was like, I'm just going to abandon this. But let's see the other image. At this point, it's important to remember that we have basically only used two out of our 10, 11 sections. So at this point, your image is not going to look as refined as you'd expect. So we need to keep going. Now, this watercolor painting on, in Oriental style, I really liked. The thing that I seem to see a bit of confusion on is the fact that it looks like it's trying to paint slightly Oriental looking characters as opposed to using Oriental oil paint style, sorry, as opposed to using Oriental watercolor style. But at the same time, it's also trying to integrate that. But overall, this watercolor painting is significantly much better than the previous one. 
So our little additions and details are beginning to work. So at this point, I decided to switch over to a different type of image. I wanted to use someone a little bit more popular. And so I was like, Arnold Schwarzenegger, 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 Schwarzenegger. So Arnold Schwarzenegger posing for a photo on the set of Commando standing next to a bike. That's the idea. The art style is photography, 1970s, muted color, street photography, reportage photography, reportage photography, whatever. And then the materials were skin and leather. And then the lighting was outdoor on a bright sunny day in a shaded environment. So we've jumped straight into the deep end. We now have the idea, we have the art style, we have the materials, and we have the lighting. And each of these are things that you will learn over time. I recommend that you head over to the Mid Journey um, portal and just see what other artists are doing and just borrow some of the styles and then plug them into here. And then let's get the exact same prompt, but all we are going to do is choose nighttime. So this time, instead of outdoor, bright, sunny, shaded for the lighting, it's going to be outdoor, nighttime, dark, moody, cinematic for the lighting. Let's see what the difference is between those two. Immediately, you see an old timey photo of an old and it looks already, it looks incredible. This is outdoor. It looks like some sort of either movie set or junkyard or whatever. That is Mid Journey's interpretation of your prompt. He has a great looking bike and the picture already looks fantastic. Let's look at the night scene. So the night scene also looks great. I like the fact that it's in a very sort of dark, mysterious environment. In one of them, he's been put in some sort of garage or warehouse. But either way, you can tell that there's a significant difference in the lighting conditions because one is during the daytime and one is during the nighttime. So I think you're beginning to see how slight changes of these parameters can actually affect the quality and the output of your photo and also the style of your photo. So let's keep going. One of the parameters that I like adding is the aspect ratio. I like the aspect ratio of 16 to 9 because it gives you a landscape, sort of like a widescreen image that you can either use on your computer as opposed to the vertical ones that you use on your phone. But you can switch it around and do 9 to 16 and then it will give you a, a, a vertical image like what you'd see on your phone. And then we are going to add two sections. We're going to add a location. In this case, we're going to give it the setting of a city street. And then we're going to add a composition. A composition is sort of the way in which you frame your image. We're going to tell it to compose wide angle soft focus with a medium shot. And then we'll do another version that has a different composition as a close up with a soft focus. So immediately you can see that now the framing of the picture has changed. You have a lot more, first of all, it's wider. And then you have a lot more attention to detail. Uh, in that picture, his arm is missing, so I don't know what's going on. You're going to notice a lot of issues, a lot of artifacts, and the trick that I've realized is just keep regenerating the image, and it will keep giving you versions until you find the ones that work for you. So this is its interpretation of a much close-up shot. So in the first three images, you can see that it's no longer a full body shot. It's trying to zoom into the top half of his body. I really like the third one, that, that looks like a really great photo, uh, but overall, all of them except the fourth one look really good, I love them. So now for this next section, I'm going to change it from a photography style and go into digital art. I'm going to give it the parameters for the art style for digital art, high contrast, realistic acrylic painting. And let's see how that looks. And then at the same time, we're going to create another art style that is a digital art, Disney style, animated, claymation, 3D art. Now, all of these are things that I have some background knowledge in because I used to do um, graphics design and visual effects. But these are things that if you're not familiar with this, you can learn them slowly, understand how all these styles affect the output of your photo and begin creating awesome art. Let's see what this looks like. Already you can see that it's a very high contrast picture. You have really stark difference between the foreground and the background and then very, very strong variance between the light and the shadow areas. So it's already pointing out the high contrast. Does it look like a digital painting? Not quite. Does it look like acrylic? Unless you are a really great acrylic artist, it does have that sort of artificial feel to it, um, but it looks a little too refined. But again, that's how Mid Journey is interpreting this. 
let's keep refining. So then I decided to change the style a little um, to try and tweak it towards what I was seeing in my mind. Um, and in this case, I removed the height, I removed the realistic part, hoping that it would be less realistic. And then I changed a few parameters. But again, I'm playing within the constraints of those things that I have created. So the other one is done. And this is the one where I was trying to create an animated design in this sort of um, 3D animation, claymation style. And this is what it looks like. So I think it looks really great. I think it looks too realistic for claymation, especially the bike. But then again, a claymation bike model would probably be made out of, um, I don't know. I don't know what material is. But now we are beginning to see a certain plasticky feel to Arnold. Um, and I think it's beginning to interpret uh, what I'm looking for a little bit better. But let's keep pushing. So I decided to keep tweaking the style for the animation. And in this case, I decided to give it a better lighting. So instead of saying a dark broody scene, I decided to give it a well-lit um, nighttime scene. Let's see how it treats that. In the meantime, this is an updated version of our acrylic painting. And it says it's the one that was high contrast ac acrylic illustration where I removed the realism. It's starting to look more like an illustration, especially that third picture, which I really like. It's starting to look like an illustration from a really good artist compared to this, which or compared to this original photo, which is looking more of a photo. Uh, but this other one looks more, more of an illustration, especially that third one. I really like it. Um, so let's proceed. So I'll just zoom in a little and you can see how it does look like a really great illustration, especially when you look at Schwarzenegger himself. It does look like a really incredible animation. I like the rain patterns in the background. It's looking great. It's looking like a digital acrylic illustration. All right. So let's take a look at some of our other styles. The claymation animated style that we had asked for. This is what the upscaled version looks like. Uh, it definitely looks like there's some claymation going in there. The basic claymation is a type of animation that uses clay, sort of like stop motion. And it's definitely looking like it's getting there. Of course, we're beginning to lose some fidelity with Schwarzenegger's face, uh, but it definitely looks like we are beginning to get a little bit closer to what we're looking for. So another style which I tried, but I forgot to hit the record button for some reason, was a digital art Pixar Disney style, specifically for PopMart. PopMart creates action figures, um, creates this sort of cartoony action figures. So they have a certain style to how they create their characters or how their characters look and so I wanted to replicate that and so when you look at that you have this sort of it's beginning to look more and more cartoony now this looks like an action figure that you'd probably collect on a set somewhere except it is still following the instructions the rest of the instructions that we gave it around lighting around night time around the type of illustration that we wanted the city street setting all these things are still a part of this equation but now it has added that variable of this specific design of character that mirrors uh, the, pop, the pop art style of um, character design. So you'll see uh, specifically the, si the, style says, the style says pop mart, digital art, Pixar, Disney style, animated, claymation. So just adding the word pop mart was able to give it a specific direction, um, which was really cool. So now we are going to add a whole lot of parameters. And so this is where the magic of mid-journey prompting comes in. You'll see that some of the best prompts, the ones that have very, very clear, specific direction, have a lot of keywords. And some of the ones that I've just done recently, and I'll be releasing a separate video for just prompts uh, later on this week. Um, you'll see that the more definition you give, the more you tell it the instructions that you want it to have, the better it will create what you're looking for. So in this thing, now we have added blind, bo blind box toy, which is a sort of toy design because I'm trying to get this image to go into a certain direction and you will see what that looks like. And then I've added things to the lighting, like, like style fine, luster, um, a well-lit scene, and then I've added something called rendering. So rendering in the 3D space is the process in which an image is converted from this sort of creation process into the actual final piece. Think about it like baking a cake. The making of the image is the mixing of the ingredients and then the rendering is like when you put the cake in the oven and then it comes out baked, right? So rendering is sort of like that baking process. And so in this way, you can have 3D renders using tools like Octane Render, 
You can create um, different settings like ambient occlusion. So some of these are things that you might not know if you don't have a background in 3D, but the more you research on them, the more you realize that creating some of these specific keywords will give your art a certain direction that could make it really stand out. So basically I kept playing around with a whole bunch of parameters and I'll explain them as we go along. Uh, but for now I was basically doing a lot of experimentation and I will show you what the results of those experimentation were. Now, the thing that you have to keep in mind is that if you are looking for a particular style, you have to continue tweaking. You have to continue making those tiny little edits, tiny checks, tiny um, tweaks so that you eventually push your art into that direction. So it can take a bit of time. It can take a bit of iterations. So now I wanted to shift the illustration style into another style that can show you stronger contrast, right? And so in this case, I wanted to do digital art, high contrast drawing using graphite pencil in black and white charcoal illustration, right? That's, a, that's the direction that I want to demonstrate. And in all of this, I noticed that I'd been removing out the realism. So I just said it added there's digital art. As you notice, it didn't really matter. Uh, but in this case, I wanted it to be a little bit specific. You'll see that coming in in the, in the, in the next example that I share. So this is what the updated illustration looks like. So this is the charcoal painting, the black and white high contrast painting. So you can see that there is now a significantly stark difference. Like each of these art styles creates a unique image and it's really up to you to figure out what else you can add to tweak that image into the direction that you want it to go. Uh, for some reason, we've gotten a bicycle and I think because I say bike, bike can be inter it interpreted as either a motorbike or a bicycle. You also notice that some images just end up looking weird. So like I mentioned earlier, you just have to keep regenerating until you get the images that match what you're looking for. It's not perfect. It has errors, but it's beginning to be so much better. So let's do a couple of close-ups. This looks phenomenal. This looks like a really, really skilled um, graphite painter that's drawn a black and white image. Ah, perfect. So now you can see how our action figure style is beginning to look more like an action figure, right? So all the tweaks that we've been making, the light style, the art style, the lighting conditions, the rendering style have been moving us towards this. So it looks like a really great action figure that looks like something you'd find on a small miniature set somewhere. And I absolutely love it. So let's take a look at some of them up close. Look at that. That looks awesome. Does it look like Schwarzenegger? Not so sure, but I love it. It looks great. Let's take a look at another one. So this is what Pop Mart looks like. That's their art style. So if you kept tweaking enough, you can get close to it. Let's look at another one. I love this. He looks like an old tired Schwarzenegger that doesn't really want to go into action. But I love the creativity of this. I love the lighting as well. And then this one. It looks like one of those Team America things. Again, looks great. Love the lighting. Brilliant stuff. So now for the photo, we are going to go into a very interesting direction. We are going to add a few other things. So the street photo, we are going to leave it at art style. We're going to leave it as photography, 1970s, muted color, reportage, etc. But then we are going to give it a type of camera and we're going to choose a Kodak using Kodak Chrome. And then we're going to leave the realism as an octane rendered, very detailed, hyper realistic, hyper detailed photo. And then for the rendering style, we'll leave it as a photograph with muted colors. We'll give it a mood where Swaznida is looking broody and tough, right? The composition is still going to stay the same as a wide angle, soft focus, medium shot. So the updated image has loaded with the with the new camera settings and doesn't that just look so much better? Like it looks like it actually has been taken by a camera, the angles, the pauses, the lighting, ETC, everything is so much neater. Let's, let's zoom in a little bit on this. That looks really realistic and I love it. And the bike looks like it's actually sitting there and is leaning against it. Obviously you're going to have artifacts, like what, what's that box doing on the other end of the bike, but it does look like a great photo. Let's take a look at another one. This looks like a really cool bike. He looks more like James Bond than Arnold Schwarzenegger in this, but I love it. it. Looks great. I love the people in the background. Great street, great lighting, etc. So we're going to regenerate that again so that it gives us a few more images to play with. And these also look great. So it's the exact same prompt. I just clicked regenerate and it has created new ones. So now I'm going to upscale the fourth image. 
that looks great. I don't feel like that there seems to the bike and his body seems to be merging between his legs. This one looks great. It actually looks like he's leaning against the bike. That looks fantastic. And then we have this one. I love this. I think this is my favorite. The bike looks a little oversized, uh, but it looks like a great photo. So now we are going to go into the studio set and we are going to do a commercial shoot. So for this, we are going to say the same idea, but the art style this time is photography, commercial photography, magazine shoot. Materials stay the same. Lighting changes to studio, indoor. It's a well-lit studio with soft light rays, cinematic, soft, colorful lights in the background. The location is a studio setting. The composition is still a close-up, soft focus, medium shot. The camera is a Canon EOS 1DX with an ISO of 800 and an f2.8. I noticed that I forgot to include the shutter speed, but with a 20 millimeter lens. The realism still looks octane rendered elements, etc. Very detailed, hyper detailed. Rendering style is still a photograph with muted colors. The mood is still the same. Let's see what this looks like. And so immediately you see that now you're back in the studio, right? So I could have done this as a vertical photo, but it's still stuck on the 16.9. I'm not going to change that. But you can see that he is in a studio taking a photo with his really magnificent chrome bike, right? So let's upscale one of those. And look at that. That looks absolutely fantastic, right? Aside from, you know, the artifacts of 3D art is, you know, you see things like his body seems to be merging to the bike. So again, you have to keep rendering and tweaking and changing until you get the image that you want. The more things that you add, the more chaotic it's going to be. So you need to choose how you describe your scenes carefully. Like you see this image, this image actually looks good because you cannot see any sort of um, artifacting with his body and the bike. This one also looks great. Actually, this is, this is my favorite. The leaning is fine. The dimensions look fine. This could be a good photo. I also love this one. Uh, I love the lighting, the mood, the contrast. It all looks great. So that is how you can play around with these things. So you just need to play around with those 11 elements, create the ones that you want, reduce the ones that you want, mess around with some stuff. But basically, once you begin defining and refining a lot of those prompts, you'll begin to see a lot of the, um, the effects that you're looking for. And in more of my videos, I'll just be sharing slideshow videos that show an image and the prompt and feel free to use them wherever you want. Now, the last thing that I want to show you is something that I like to call the chaos engine, which is basically the stylization. Stylization ranges from 100 to 1000, I think. I could be wrong, but that's what I remember. When you turn it all the way up to 1000, you start to get some very, very interesting results. The closer it is to zero or to 100, the more it sort of tries to stay within the parameters of the image that you've given it. But the more you push it towards 1000, the more it deviates in terms of really tiny, but really, really interesting details. And the output just becomes significantly richer. And we're going to see examples of that. So we shall apply this stylization at 1000 to all the images so that you see how things really change. Let's do that and then render, render, render. And so now let's look at the first one. Look at that. Look at how much more detail there is in these images. The leather jackets, the creases, the faces, the lighting, the vibrance, the luminance. It's like it's gone bonkers. Some of the images have issues. He's still merging with a bike. Some of them look fantastic, like the fourth one. Um, some of them is an actual bike. So this is the graphite illustration. Have you seen how richer this is? The bike looks glorious. Arnold looks fantastic. Look at that. There's just so much going on in this image. And that's simply because you set the stylization all the way to maximum to a thousand. So look at the pop art. Doesn't that look amazing? Right, let's upscale all of them. This is the street art that we created in the beginning, the 1970s, with stylization set all the way to 1000. Again, it looks fantastic. I love, love, love the details that stylization gives it. So this is the, the action um, character. He looks great. So much detail, so much richness. Um, this is another one with a an, with an much older bike with a much older type of bike. Again, I love it. The colors, it's, 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 it's fantastic. 
I love this. The bike is so tiny. It's silly, but again, glorious. I love this. This looks like very, um, walking dead style, but I absolutely love it as well. This is the street lighting. Look at how rich that is. That looks amazing. That looks phenomenal. And then you look at that. He's definitely, his leg is definitely matching with the bike. Again, issues with that, um, AI art. Um, but yeah, like you can see all these images, even in the studio, everything, they've given him a proper bike this time, proper bicycle. It looks fantastic. I love it. Uh, this looks like a great photograph for a magazine. That is absolutely phenomenal. That looks so much like Arnold in a studio. So there is just so much that you can do. So to summarize, it's been a long video, I know, but if you just keep playing around with these prompts, obviously they can be made shorter. I know that some people in the comments are going to be like, all these prompts are too long, blah, blah, blah. But I like it because it gives me the control. It allows me to be able to say for this section, this is what I want to do for this other section. This is what I want to do for this other section. This is what I want to do. Instead of looking for keywords and variables in all sorts of places, I know that there's a way that I've categorized them. So if this kind of prompting is helpful for you, I hope it works. I hope you love it. But this is the kind of art that I've been able to create with it. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.